Lincoln Keenholz loves to wear the number three. Is it because he's won three state titles as a varsity football player? Or he's a three-star prospect in football? Maybe it's because he's an all-state performer in three different sports. At a school that has had some outstanding multi-sport athletes, Keenholz can put his resume up against any of them. Despite the notoriety and attention that comes with being an outstanding year-round athlete, it's not what fuels him. He's kind of a soft-spoken kid, uh, and, and you know he's just okay not being the center of attention. You know, but at the same time, when you get out between the lines or you get into a competition, he can flip that switch and, and turn it on. He may be on the quiet side, but when he's competing, he's hard to miss. But at different stages of his teens, he's had a different favorite sport. Basketball's fun. It's it used to be my first love, but uh, I kind of fell in love with high school football. Playing on Friday nights are different. It seems like everything comes easy to Lincoln, but he remembers a time when it wasn't so easy as he started out as the quarterback in his sophomore season. It was kind of nerve wracking, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Cause the year before that I had, uh, I had Garrett Stout as my, as my mentor basically. So I played like right behind him and got to do a little bit of playing, but then having to step into like the big role my sophomore year and all that. Uh, I mean, throughout the season, I think I got better just based on decision making, uh, reads, stuff like that. But uh, it kind of comes into like a confidence piece, I think. He's got a huge arm, you know, really big arm, uh, but he trusted it. You know, he didn't, he didn't overly understand the progressions and, and how to read things just yet. And he just would trust his arm and say, I can fit this in there, you know, kind of Brett Favre style. And, uh, you know, I think the game really slowed down for him in that middle of his sophomore year. He started his sophomore year with 13 interceptions in his first seven games. Hardly the stuff of a future D1 athlete. But after that forgettable start, he recommitted to preparation. Then he won five games in a row and threw 12 touchdowns with only two picks. Keenholz comes prepared and that preparation has vaulted his success. I think that's the, the number one thing that he's really grown leaps and bounds in his time is he's really prepared to a level where he understands what he needs to do and what our team needs to do to win the football game. The Govs have now won the last two state titles with Keenholz as the starting quarterback. Last year in the championship game, Lincoln led his team to the title almost single-handedly. Here was down by 21 points and their starting running back was out. He's one of those kids where it just kind of goes to that intangible piece of you know, our running backs got hurt and then we got down uh, and we go, okay, we have to go empty. If we need to run the ball, it's you and it's, yeah, okay, sure, whatever you need. He ended up throwing for 347 yards and running for an additional 190 yards. The win gave the Governors their fifth straight championship. It was probably the best football game I've ever played in. It was after that most memorable game that recruiters across the nation realized there was something really special in the middle of South Dakota. Keenholz knew he wanted to play college football, but couldn't fully grasp what options he had. I mean, I saw myself at like the FCS level at the beginning, and then once I got that first offer from SDSU, I know I can do good here, obviously, but then starting to work with the rigs and stuff, and then his connections with like Washington and the bigger schools, that kind of helped with me getting myself put out there, I guess, more. And then once that one, offer from Washington came in, that's when all the Big Ten schools came in and started talking and then that's where it kind of blew up from there. The Pac-12 powerhouse came to the middle of South Dakota to see him in person. He had a tough assignment, but literally passed the test. It was actually like a 25 mile an hour wind day when they came and saw me throw and I was thrown into the wind too, so it was a challenge, but uh, uh, I did decent. I did well enough to get an offer from, from them there. In order to manage the madness, he trimmed his list to four schools last May. North Dakota State, Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming out of dozens of offers. But the correlation with Washington head coach Kalen DeBoer, who's a South Dakota native, and their style of play is what won him over. 
When I first got there, just sitting down with him in his office and talking to him just about like small town South Dakota stuff and moving to like the next stage, uh, like moving to like your biggest opportunity, like was, because that's kind of what he did. He went from Millbank and then to uh, USF and then to Fresno or Indiana and stuff like that. So he had some, he had some big moves in his career and then him just sharing his uh, experiences with that kind of, kind of sets up a good connection between us. Keenholz will assault the record books this fall. A little context with these crazy numbers that he's putting up as the Pierce starting quarterback. The Govs have had four All-State QBs precede Lincoln. Keenholz, in his first two full seasons as quarterback, has mashed the Pierce record book. He already has more career yards and passing touchdowns than any of them, and he's got a full season to go. This season, he'll lead the Govs on their quest to win six straight state titles, something that hasn't been done in South Dakota since West Central did it in 2005. And joined by Jason and Dara. All right, he's going to Washington. There is the Kalen DeBoer, the coach connection, but Lincoln kind of wants, they'd like to throw it around a little bit, and he thinks that's going to be good for his game, right? Yeah, he's watched Kalen DeBoer for a couple years now as he's made his way up the coaching ranks um, through Fresno State and now to Washington, but he loves that style of play. He said, I really liked what North Dakota State had to offer. I liked what Wyoming had to, to offer. They both produced great quarterbacks, but he likes to sling it around a little bit, and that really fits with what Kalen DeBoer does at Washington. Why does Keenholz wear number three? So why he wears number three is goes back to really – him being a peer homer from yeah. the time he was a little kid. He watched a lot of peer football, a lot of peer basketball. He ended up watching Zach Hansen, who went on to play at Creighton, of course, from the, on the basketball court, yeah. and became a Creighton fan, ended up loving Doug McDermott, one of their best players, while Zach Hansen was there. And, of course, he wore number three. And then from that point on, Lincoln Keenholz was number three in as many sports as he could get the number on. Gotcha. All right. That's why I wore 22 for Doug Flutie back in the day. But of course. All right. There you go. That makes sense. But you hear all this debate about multi-sport athletes play more than one sport uh, instead of just focusing on one sport. For Keenholz, it probably doesn't matter. He was great in all of them. But he did that, and it paid off for him in the end anyway. So, so he gets a lot more attention because when you're that good at a single sport, sometimes it is better to just really concentrate on that sport. For him, he was the best at three different sports. And so he didn't want to give up on any of them. And at different times, he had a favorite sport, baseball and then basketball. And then he switched to football and has really been sold on football the last few years. So the multi-sport athlete aspect has really helped Lincoln Keenholz. And Pierre's got a really good chance to do it again, right? A really good chance. All right, thanks a lot, Jandy. This has been Midco Sports Magazine presented by Build Your Base with Beef Sports Nutrition and Training Program.